Hey y'all, good morning. It's Ned over at my Philippine Dreams, N to the E to the G over at MPD, and I'm running solo because Michelle is sleeping as she worked all night. As promised or as threatened yesterday, we're going to be talking about allowances, giving allowances to a Filipina partner. Um, be aware of the gender context. I'm going to be saying Filipina in, referent, in reference to Panais, and I'm going to be saying foreigners in reference to male, foreigner, expats. But also realize that it's at this point in time, as the world is moving along, it's all independent and interchangeable. One of the one of the things that surprised me, when you pick up a little bit of Bisaya and you start start to realize what's going on around you, when Panais gather at social gatherings or events, and it's coupled they're coupled with expat foreigner boyfriends, they usually talk about two things. One of the, one of them is is sex and they talk about it in an obtuse, humorous manner. That's when they usually start giggling and laughing out loud. And they also ask each other what their allowances are. Allowances are a very real part of the equation when it comes to expat foreigners and panais in the Philippines. And you're gonna find that most guys are giving their girlfriends, their significant others, their better halves, an allowance of some sort. And when, they, when they're doing that, they're going to rationalize it and they're just going to justify it by saying, you know, she cooks, she cleans, she takes care of certain things, and she performs other certain duties. So why shouldn't I be financially compensating her for that? When they're given the money, the Panais, the Filipinas, will usually use it for some personal purchases, but I've discovered and I've seen and I've learned, and I'm learning as I go along, that a good amount of the money usually goes back to their families for support, for, for putting rice on the table, for putting food on the table, for taking care of electrical bills, all that stuff. So they're not really being selfish when they're using the money. A lot of it is being conferred to family support. Some of the guys will also say that, oh, it's a part of Filipino culture, providing allowances to your girlfriends, your significant other, your wife, or what, whatever. And from what I've learned and from what I'm seeing, it's actually not. If the Filipino couple and the Ponoy couple are of equal social class, there usually won't be an allowance. Um, they'll, they'll usually have joint investment and be equal stakeholders in the running of the household. The, when expats are with Filipinas, though, and a lot of times and a lot of occasions in the majority of cases, they're not of social, equal social class, of equal financial class there's usually some sort of discrepancy. So that's where you'll hear, oh, you know, all, when, when you're talking to a Filipino, well, all my other, you know, Filipino friends that ha are dating or going out with expat foreigners are getting allowances, so why can't I get one? Let's also talk about shouldering. Shouldering is a Pinoy term, and basically what it has to do is sharing family costs. If somebody in the family is making money, if somebody is doing well, there's usually some obligation or expectation that they're going to su help support the family and share in the family costs. This is mostly within the lower class because most middle and upper classes are able to take care of themselves. But in the lower classes, when you have a daughter or son who's lucky enough be to become an uh, overseas Filipino worker um, or who's able to get a nice, a well-paying uh, BPO job or working at a call center, or when a foreigner comes into the equation, um, is that unspoken obligation. We talk, I've talked previously about utang na loob, and basically that's debt of obligation. And it's usually the eldest in the families, the oldest, the oldest son or the oldest daughter, usually feels it the most. And they're expected to help take care of their little brothers and sisters as they're growing up. And they also bear the burden of helping to support the family, uh, the parents, as they're getting older, usually in, in their 50s. Um, and it's really a cool concept, people taking care of people, that family cohesion, that social co cohesion. It's something that you really don't see in the West all that much. Um, and it's, it's, it's sort of ritualized here, again, with the concept of utang na loob, respect for elders, that debt of obligation, they provided you life, they you know, raised you, they gave you food, they, you know, uh, education, all that stuff. So this, they're expecting you to pass that on. And when a foreigner comes into the equation, he's automatically assumed to be rich, and compared to the usual lower Filipino social class that they're entering into a relationship with, 
they are usually of a superior financial class, at least. Sometimes we're of the same social class. But usually because of the discrepancies in economies between the West and the East, we are on superior. All right, now let's speak generally about some dangers and, and some concerns about providing allowance to a Filipina significant other or wife. Now, these aren't my personal views. These are just general stereotypes that people on the outside might cast upon viewing somebody providing another person with an uh, allowance. First up is the transactional nature of the entire affair. Um, there is money being provided for services, and sometimes those services aren't quite clearly defined. Um, some people can view it as pay-to-play, again, that transactional nature. At worst, some people can view it as prostitution on the installment plan, providing steady income, providing a certain amount of money per month for services rendered. The second one, and the one that I'm more concerned with, is it creates a, balance, a power balance within the relationship. Um, you can be seen as utilizing financial leverage. If you're the only person with money coming in and your significant other is not working, if you're providing an allowance, you're basically monetarily incentivizing that relationship. Um, you're not on equal footing. If you cast an ultimatum and say, hey, you know, you're going to let me do this or you're out of here, that can cause some real problems and that can be, you know, cause some grounds and some possibilities for abuse not only of a physical nature, but also of a mental nature. And that's not a good thing. It also, and finally, it creates a sort of dependent semi-adult status on your significant other, on your Filipino partner. Um, the foreigner can also be seen as a palabigasan, um, a container for empty rice husks, or a person that someone depends on for their support, and, and not only their own support, but also the support of the family. Because don't forget, if you're going to provide an allowance, you're not only taking care of your Filipino partner, but nine times out of ten, you're taking care of the family too. So there's a lot of pressure on them. So the three dangers that some people see and that I see with this is, again, the transactional nature of providing an allowance to a Filipino partner, the creation of the power imbalance, um, because one person has money and the other person doesn't have money, and also conferring that dependent semi-adult status. Is there any solution to this? I don't know. Ideally, I guess, and maybe, I mean, the ideal would possibly be, if you're in a long-term relationship with a Filipino partner, to have a joint account, to sit down every month and work on your monthly budgets. And actually, having a Filipina in the equation, because a lot of us foreigners are kind of lost um, when it comes to certain things, can save you a lot of money. They know where the bargains are, and they can usually spot the bullshit right away, and they can usually negotiate lower prices than their Kano partners. Um, so when everything is working in an ideal manner, people are equal stakeholders, they're not being dependent, they both feel that vested stakehold in the relationship and in the household and it creates a pretty solid foundation and firm footing for any future relationship, wherever the relationship is going. Personally, the situation that Michelle and I have, I have never paid her an allowance, and I'm saying that not to make put myself on superior footing. I think I just got really lucky um, in meeting her because her family, she doesn't have a family that depends on her for their monetary income and for putting rice on the table. Um, when she was working and making a lot of money, she used to contribute a certain percentage of her earnings towards our rent and our utilities and food costs and monthly costs. Um, then when she's not working, of course, you know, I'm basically shouldering everything. And now that she's working again, I basically decided that I'm not going to have her pay anything into our ongoing, you know, monthly budgets or anything. Um, that's going to be her money. She's going to use it for whatever she wants. If she wants to take care of her family, send it, you know, if they got it you know, medical issues or other things going on, if they need work on the roof of the house, something like that. If she wants to get shoes, not too many shoes, um, she wants to go shopping, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're getting, you know, I'm very comfortable and I'm spending well beneath my means here in the Philippines. So that's how we're going to play it out from now on. She's not fully aware of this, of course. Um, and again, she, when she goes out shopping, when she starts negotiating, when she starts getting involved in, in the relationship from a financial aspect, it actually saves money in the long term. So that is a brief assess assessment and overview of my thoughts and general thoughts on providing an allowance to a Filipino partner. 
If you have anything you want to add, if you have any comments, complaints, bitches, gripes, anything like that, leave it in the comments section. Leave a thumbs up or thumbs down. Either one increases viewer engagement. If you like the channel, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. This is Ned over at My Philippine Dreams. Peace.